quick disclaimer, this video is not meant to demonize all forms of religious or spiritual practices or beliefs, but instead to show what can happen in unhealthy and abusive spiritual or religious environments. Have you ever tried to share something really difficult that you're going through or brought a disagreement or brought something that you didn't like to another person only to be met with a response that sounded something like, God works in mysterious ways. Whatever you're having an issue with, with me is a direct reflection of how you view the world or everything happens for a reason. If so, this could be an indication that the other person is engaging in spiritual bypassing. If you grew up in a high control religious or spiritual environment, there's also the possibility that a person can internalize these very messages and engage in spiritual bypassing of themselves, where their own hardships are very much invalidated because they've been taught to do so. Spiritual bypassing is very common in high control cultic groups in addition to religious or spiritual organizations. Self-proclaimed spiritual new age gurus also can heavily, heavily engage in the practice of spiritual bypassing because what it does is deflect from the real conversation or the real issues that a person is bringing to them and instead can sometimes put it back on the other person who is posing the problem. Today I'm going to break down exactly Exactly what spiritual bypassing is, how it can manifest itself, and what you need to know so that you can recognize it if it ever happens to you. Stay tuned, I'm about to get into it. and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Either way, I'm always happy that you're here. I'm Rachel Ann. I'm a licensed professional counselor and I make videos on all things psychological commentary of current events, anti-scam, and I have a particular interest in high control cultic organizations. If this sounds like something that you're into, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Before I get into the meat of this video, I just want to make one more small disclaimer that by making this video, I'm not saying that every person who uses these phrases is engaging in spiritual bypassing with malicious intent. However, more often than not in corrupt leaders or high control cultic environments, these phrases are used to deflect from the leader taking any responsibility for their actions and instead placing blame back on the survivors or the participants in the group or relationship. You may be familiar with this experience. You do meet someone or you have known someone for a long time and potentially you have an issue with that person. Something happens that is upsetting for you. You bring it to them and their immediate response is, let's pray about it or, Whatever you're seeing in me is a direct reflection of yourself, which I've already shared in the beginning of this video, but that is just such a common response I hear and see, especially with emphasis on the new age spirituality setting, that it really made me want to create this video to talk all about what spiritual bypassing is. It's very difficult to seek and receive any kind of resolution if the other person is always engaging in the use of flowery language in an effort to to deflect from taking ownership or taking responsibility. And in the case of these self-proclaimed new age spiritual gurus that continue to pop up, and even pastors, even some religious leaders, is that oftentimes spiritual bypassing is used in an effort to avoid admitting that they don't know everything. So instead of being able to just say, you know, I really don't know the answer to that question, it becomes all about putting it back on the question asker, the answer seeker, instead of just owning their role in it, instead of owning the fact that maybe even they made a mistake or messed up. This can also happen on really any kind of relational dynamic. So parent to child, friendships, family members of any kind. And then of course, even romantic partners can engage in spiritual bypassing. The term spiritual bypassing was initially created by a psychotherapist named John Wellwood, who authored the book Toward a Psychology of Awakening. Wellwood's definition states that spiritual bypassing 
is a tendency to use spiritual ideas and practices to sidestep or avoid facing unresolved emotional issues, psychological wounds, and unfinished developmental tasks. So as you can imagine, if there is an individual, and I'll just use the example of a narcissistic leader who is in a position of power, spiritual bypassing falls right in line with the emotional underdevelopment that that person has. If someone is narcissistic, then often there is a complete refusal to take ownership or responsibility for their actions and they become expert at manipulating and deflection. So any kind of grievance that is brought towards that spiritual leader gets twisted and turned and used against the follower instead of the leader taking a step back and taking inventory about their practices or how ethical they're being. It's a really expert way to gaslight Followers of a cultic group, a religious group, a spiritual group, a romantic relationship, all, all of the things I've already mentioned, but it, it really becomes an expert way to insert manipulation and confusion in the victim of the spiritual bypassing. Dr. Robert Masters Augustus also authored a book entitled Spiritual Bypassing When Spirituality Disconnects Us From What Really Matters. Dr. Master shares that spiritual bypassing is a very persistent shadow of spirituality, manifesting in many forms, often without being acknowledged as such. Aspects of spiritual bypassing include exaggerated detachment, emotional numbing and repression, overemphasis on the positive anger phobia, blind or overly tolerant compassion, weak or too porous boundaries, lopsided development, cognitive intelligence often being far ahead of emotional and moral intelligence, debilitating judgment about one's negativity or shadow side, devaluation of the personal relative to the spiritual, and delusions of having arrived at a higher level of being. The very interesting piece of spiritual bypassing to me, with particular emphasis on this snippet that I just read to you, is that there is so much in terms of spiritual narcissism in spiritual bypassing that could really be linked together. So we know that when somebody is a spiritual narcissist, they claim to have extraordinary abilities, senses, or in religious settings, that direct line of communication with God. They have been anointed or empowered in some way. Typically, there's no way to validate these claims. They're just making these claims, but they are so grandiose in nature. And this can often be very attractive to the follower that ends up becoming coerced or involved in a high control cultic group to hear that a person has all these answers. So it's just a little tidbit I wanted to point out how closely linked spiritual narcissism and spiritual bypassing can be. One of the things that I really liked that Dr. Master shared was that spiritual bypassing is essentially the exaggerated sense of detachment, emotional numbing and repression, overemphasis on the positive, and the cognitive intelligence often being far ahead of emotional and moral intelligence. I see these things pop up all the time in both the religious and spiritual New Age settings. So a lot of times when someone is in that role of being the New Age spiritual guru, there's a lot of intellectualizing that happens. So if you really listen to what they're saying, it's all cognitive processes. It's not necessarily emotionally linked. Instead, it's all about talking around the issues in a pseudo-scientific, pseudo-intellectual way that don't really affect permanent change. There may be some helpful snippets of information that get put out there, 
But when everything is really teased apart, it's all a bunch of fluff. And oftentimes it's linked to creating this extreme sense of detachment from the people in your life, from your earthly possessions. And especially emotions. And this is definitely a tactic of high control cultic leaders in addition to religious leaders. Because if somebody can be out of touch with their emotional experience, this almost automatically starts the process of breaking down or completely suppressing any critical thinking. Emotions are very important in terms of showing people how they feel about certain situations and even increasing a sense of introspection and of course critical thinking. Yet if you're constantly told to detach from your emotional reaction or that a particular emotion such as anger is bad or wrong, then how are you supposed to react or feel if something that the group does or the corrupt leader does angers you? Well, you have just been taught to suppress that emotion, don't ask questions about it, and as you can see, this is a recipe for internal disconnection, and when someone is disconnected from themselves and their emotional reaction, then this only allows for more control to be exhibited over that particular individual or at the very least just to silence that person. Emotions inherently are not wrong. It's something that each one of us experiences. It's learning to manage them but not ignore them. And what this is is a form of spiritual bypassing. It bypasses the reality of life, the reality of the situation. And this is when followers or survivors of these kinds of high control cultic organizations can start to engage in gaslighting of themselves, thinking that there is something wrong with them, that they are tied to their emotions, that they are tied to earthly possessions, when in reality, these are all very important concepts that are not to be ignored or trivialized or intellectual away, but these corrupt leaders have an expert way of doing this and creating self-doubt in the victim. The next piece of Dr. Master's book that I'm going to go ahead and read to you states that the explosion of interest in spirituality since the mid-1960s, especially Eastern spirituality, has been accompanied by a corresponding interest and immersion in spiritual bypassing, which has, however, not very often been named, let alone viewed as such. It's been easier to frame spiritual bypassing as a religion transcending spiritually advanced practice or perspective, especially in the fast food spirituality epitomized by faddish phenomena like the secret. Some of the more glaringly facile features, such as drive through servings of reheated wisdom like don't take it personally or whatever bothers you about someone is really only about you or it's all just an illusion, are available for consumption and parroting by just about anyone. This could not be more true and you may have heard me say this before if you've watched my channel. But really, anyone can say anything. Anyone in this day and age can posture as an expert. In fact, so many people clamor to be considered an expert and have a large following. And sometimes people get to that position of power through a sense of spiritual bypassing. They may switch up the verbiage slightly and say things in a way that can come across as defiant or spunky or right in your face. And it can gain a lot of attention because they seem like they are this person who is so authentic. But again, when the words are actually listened to, when the subject matter is fully teased apart, the meat is just not there. Additionally, when phrases such as whatever bothers you about someone is really only about you, in a sense, that is a form of victim blaming. This is obviously not applicable to all situations. Maybe there is an element of truth. Maybe there is a piece to this where if someone does treat you in a certain way, it wasn't malicious, it wasn't abusive, and you realize, huh, why is this bothering me so much? Yes, that's that can be positive to in, encourage that self-introspection and self-awareness. 
However, in abusive religious and new age spiritual settings, this is often twisted and misused horrifically. So that form of spiritual bypassing becomes a form of victim blaming and creating this sense in the victim that they're at fault because they're letting a situation that is very unhealthy get to them and bother them. The last quote I'm going to read to you from Dr. Master's book is that true spirituality is not a high, not a rush, not an altered state. I found this particular statement to be particularly apropos, if you will, in terms of how high control and cultic groups capitalize on this altered state or this high that's often achieved after engaging with the group. So they take the experience of somebody experiencing euphoria, potentially even having an emotional breakthrough, and they use that and hold it over that follower's head as a way to show them, hey, you are benefiting. Even though you may be severely controlled and abused in other areas of your life by us, by the group, you are still gaining from being here. You're still having that high. And it can just be a very confusing experience for the follower to try to make sense. Why would I still be experiencing this altered state or this sense of high if I wasn't still getting something from the group? So if you experience a strong awakening or a strong religious awakening, Pay attention. Of course, this can be a beautiful experience when it's done in a healthy way. I am a therapist. I love the light bulb moments that people can have from coming to therapy, but it's just really important to make sure that it doesn't end up becoming a chasing the high type effect. What are some examples and signs of spiritual bypassing? I'm pulling some of these from verywellmind.com. I will link the article down below, but to get us going, here are just a few. The first one is if a person avoids feelings of anger, I will be the first to say that in religious, cultic, high control groups, a lot of times anger is deemed as bad. Anger is considered to be of the devil or evil, and this is absolutely a form of spiritual bypassing. How can a person go through life and not experience anger or being mad? We can actually learn a lot from that emotional reaction. What would be causing us to feel mad? What can we do with this anger? How can we move through it or recognize a boundary needs to be put in place? But certainly, avoiding anger or labeling it as bad, spiritual bypassing. The next one is, if the person believes in their own spiritual superiority as a way to hide from insecurities. I touched on this earlier, won't get too much into it, but essentially we see this a lot with spiritual narcissists. They believe that they are extra enlightened and typically there are no evidence-based claims. There is no evidence-based information to back that up. The next form of spiritual bypassing includes believing that traumatic events must serve as learning experiences. It's a way that God is trying to teach you something. It's a, a reason and why God works in mysterious ways or that no matter what, there is always a silver lining behind every negative event. Now, to a degree, this could be true, but on the totally opposite end of the spectrum, this can also be very harmful because what it does is kind of go into that form of toxic positivity. It takes out the fact that sometimes in life, bad things just happen. There doesn't always have to be an in-depth explanation for why they happen. Sometimes we just will not know why something bad happens. And so when churchgoers, when religious or new age spiritual people constantly put out there from every negative experience, you're going to learn something. This can immediately set a person up for failure because sometimes the person who is going through the really negative event struggles with understanding, well, what am I learning from this situation? And so it can make the person feel as if they're not doing enough and that they aren't as invested as they should be in the spiritual teachings or the religious doctrine because they're obviously missing something that everybody else seems to be experiencing or seeing. This form of spiritual bypassing is particularly harmful in survivors, in four survivors of CSA or SA, when a 
corrupt, unhealthy leader or individual in the group tells that survivor that this is something that you can learn from. What is this experience showing you? And it becomes very harmful because instead of completely validating the survivor's experience and just being an authentic source of support, instead it places the responsibility on the survivor to learn from an unfathomable experience instead of placing the responsibility on the perpetrator. It's a very manipulative and sneaky way of undermining the survivor's experience. And as a result, it can really prevent true healing to occur because that survivor is being held responsible in a way. Another one that I see come up quite frequently in spiritual and new age cultic groups is the focus only on spirituality and completely ignoring the present. One more quote from Dr. Masters, as he says, the trappings of spiritual bypassing can look good, particularly when they seem to promise freedom from life's fuss and fury, but this supposed serenity and detachment is often little more than metaphysical volume, especially for those who have made too much of a virtue out of being and looking positive. The red flag to look out for here is any kind of encouragement to detach from the reality of the world that we are living in currently. Spiritual bypassing will put out phrases that just be positive, don't allow your mind to go to the negative thoughts, and it just negates the power of the range of human emotions that we all have the propensity to experience. The next example is if someone places extremely high, often unattainable idealism on what people are supposed to be achieving. This is a warning sign of spiritual bypassing. Again, everyone has their own limit, their own capacity to achieve whatever it is they consider in being enlightened. And what the abusive cultic high control leader can do is take this idealism, say that they have owned it, that they have found it, and it's dangled like a carrot for all of the followers, all of the people watching their YouTube videos or you know, consuming their materials or taking their classes. And when the follower never fully achieves that ideal state, they are left wondering, well, what is wrong with me that I can't achieve this and my spiritual teacher can? Or it's never questioned against a spiritual teacher. It's always almost that the survivor, the victim of the spiritual bypassing questions themselves. Feelings of extreme detachment can also be a form of spiritual bypassing. I have touched on this one previously, but just to go ahead and show the importance of this, whether it's detachment from emotions or detachment from literal earthly possessions that a person has, this can be a very sneaky and manipulative tactic, especially if it's a religious or spiritual group that is demanding that the members give all of their income or money over to to the group because at the end of the day, the higher power will provide for them. What this does is remove the power from the group members because their finances then become tied up in the group and to have any concerns or worries about how they're going to pay their mortgage or support their family becomes a lack of faith, which then equates to that sense of not being detached enough or not having enough trust in the higher power that they'll provide. And and it can just be a very underhanded way of manipulating group members. But now on to discuss why detachment from emotions is also very important to take note of. Self-proclaimed gurus have often said that to not experience emotions is really the optimal way of living, that if you are allowing certain things to get to you, it's a problem within yourself. This is an extremely big and potentially dangerous fallacy that people can fall prey to because if something is upsetting to you, it's upsetting for a potential reason. This is giving you potential insight 
into what a trigger is for you. This, it could be somebody being unkind to you and maybe it's upsetting, but you're able to dig a little bit deeper. What exactly happened? Did you feel like your boundaries were infringed upon? Did it trigger unresolved wounds from growing up in a negative household? And having that person say this, say whatever to you really brought all that back for you. If spiritual bypassing is not fully recognized, which in this day and age, it can be very easy to not fully recognize it, quite honestly, because we hear certain phrases so often. Everything happens for a reason. God works in mysterious ways. It was meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. This too will pass. All things work together for good. A family member is in a better place after they passed away. And in some cases, people are told if they express a grievance that they need to stop being so negative and whiny, that they need to just learn how to deal with their emotions. So I share all of those to demonstrate how commonplace many of these phrases are that we hear in everyday vernacular, everyday interactions even. I'm sure if you pay attention to it, you'll recognize, oh, okay, many people say these things. And now this is not to say that everyone is engaging in spiritual bypassing if these phrases are used. Always important to examine intent and if the person who is using these phrases is intending to shut down the other person or not communicate because they are just telling the other person, oh, well, everything happens for a reason, don't worry about it, then that is when the invalidation can come into play and be harmful and or destructive. So it can make spiritual bypassing really fall under the radar. And sometimes I've noticed that someone may walk away from a conversation with someone who's engaging in spiritual bypassing, and they may not fully understand why, but they may feel unresolved that something felt amiss in the conversation, but it's hard to pinpoint why. This can sometimes be linked to the very concept of spiritual bypassing and how that can elicit a range of different emotions and symptoms in a person. Which leads me to the last piece of this video when it comes to the negative effects of spiritual bypassing and what those can have on an individual. Some of the most common include a sense of anxiety. To me, this can come from somebody feeling as if they're not doing enough, that they're not subscribing enough to the teachings or the doctrine, or they're falling behind because they are not receiving the same sense of enlightenment or experience that other people are having, or if someone is starting to experience adverse effects from the religious or spiritual high control group, yet when they try to share this with anyone else, they are shut down and told to be quiet. This can obviously elicit internal disconnect, which then can cause a sense of anxiety. There can be in high control cultic groups, this sort of dependence or just blind allegiance to the leader of the group. Really, this goes into high control cultic groups in general that oftentimes this is the ultimate name of the game here. They want for people to have that unwavering, non-critical thinking mentality. All dissent is discouraged and they are instead pointed to that blind following that no matter what, we will follow this leader, we will not question them. And this can be a fallout of spiritual bypassing as well. Codependency is another major symptom or experience that a person can have when spiritual bypassing has occurred, especially in individuals who have been a part of a high control cultic group. The very big red flag for me when it comes to either self-proclaimed wellness gurus or new age spiritual leaders or even religious leaders is oftentimes there are certain tactics used that foster a sense of codependency, a sense of dependency on the leader themselves or the very group. In a healthy relationship across the board, there should always be interdependence. Two people that function as apart from one another, but then are able to come together and share about their day, share different experiences that are allowed to have different thoughts on things, different ways of viewing different situations, and they can communicate about it. 
But in these high control cultic groups, there is not going to be the encouragement of interdependence of two different people functioning on these independent levels and then coming together. Instead, any form of interdependence is usually discouraged in it. The follower is encouraged to consume more and more material, consume more and more YouTube videos since we're now in the age of the self-proclaimed YouTube spiritual new age gurus out there. But it isn't necessarily encouraged that you achieve your own sense of independence. Instead, it's a, I can continue to help you. You still have so much to learn from me. You're not ready yet. Let's come back to my retreat again. And look, therapists, psychologists, counselors, they're not immune to this either. Anyone can engage in spiritual bypassing. Any human being who is in the helping profession can have maybe some kind of unhealthy need for validation that they're receiving from their clientele, that they're receiving from the people who they're serving. And it becomes really easy to not keep the client's best interest in mind for a practitioner who is really unethical. And instead, they're only trying to create and foster that sense of codependency so that they are fulfilling their own spiritual, narcissistic, or unhealthy practitioner needs. When spiritual bypassing continues to increase, there can be a normalizing of unhealthy, toxic interactions. This can come from those thought-terminating cliches where someone may say, it is what it is, or this is just how we do it here, and it's meant to shut down any kind of rebuke, any kind of response from anyone else. Instead, there is no explanation. That's just kind of the dead end of the sentence is, it is what it is. This is all part of God's plan. You know, how is a person supposed to respond when someone engages in the use of one of those cliched statements? It just kind of shuts the, the conversation down. There's, there's not a whole room left for dialoguing about different points of view at that point. This is such an interesting topic to me, and if you enjoyed this particular topic, you may also enjoy two previous videos I did. One is on techniques that all cultic groups use. Another is one of my most recent videos where I shared all about how spiritual abuse manifests itself in romantic relationships, family units, and then of course, high control cultic organizations. If you want to help out my channel, please feel free to like, share this video with somebody who may benefit, and subscribe. Take really good care of yourself as always and be well.